Coach Andersi, welcome to the first episode of the 2023 New Year. Happy New Year. How are you doing, Coach Andersi? Good. How about you? Hanging in there. Just uh, excited for 2023 and see what Kent State Wrestling has to hold. Uh, a lot of big stuff happening for you in 2023. But uh, when you got on tonight, I heard the, do you remember the $6 million man? Do you remember the, no, 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 no. Do you remember that noise? Yes, I do. Okay, that would only be something that like a, a like late forties, fifty year olds would understand. But um, why am I hearing the bionic? No, 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 no. Six million dollars, Steve Austin, six million dollar man noise when I when you got on tonight, Coach Andersi. Well, I, I had to get a a hip replacement. It it, <laughs> it wasn't the, a full hip replacement. It's called the Birmingham um, resurfacing, but ultimately, it's a it's a young man's hip replacement. So. I can do pretty much anything I want after a year's up. Um, the, the, what the full hip replacement, you kind of, you can't do a whole lot of things. You can't run, you can't ride a bike. You definitely can't get into wrestling positions. Um, so I got the same one by the same doctor that Tim Flynn got both of his done by, by uh, Alex Clemens got his done by him. Um, Andy Rovat, I believe got, got one done by him as well. Guy from Northwestern. I can't remember his name came out and got one done. Wow. That's an uh, illustrious group of individuals. So is he yeah. a wrestling specific doctor or a sports specific doctor? How'd you get no. this doctor? He's just, he's a, he's a Birmingham resurfacing hip resurfacing specific doctor. Um, okay. So he, you know, he worked out at Cleveland clinic for forever. He was one of the, the founders of this, this hip um, started about 20, 24, 25 years ago with it. Uh, so it's relatively new in the in the world of medicine, I guess you could say. He, I had him all scheduled about a year, about two years ago. I had him scheduled for after last wrestling season. He retired in Cleveland Clinic and right up here by me. Um, I searched all over, tried to find the next best guy. Um, wasn't sure what to do. Couldn't really find someone. The next best guys in in uh, San Francisco and also in North Carolina. Um, after figured out insurances with both those guys and how much it would cost me to get to both of them. It was kind of crazy. So at some point my wife was like, well, let's just try the, you know, Cleveland clinic. It's one of the best hospitals in the world. Um, did some research there with the guys that do it. There's two guys that do it there and it isn't what they, it isn't what their, their full-time practice is. It's uh, it's something else they do on the side. And everybody that I talked to, you know, I'll throw out a name. His name is Jeff Coghill. He was one of my high school coaches, Graham Coghill is his dad. Everyone knows Graham Coghill if you're in the wrestling world. But Jeff Coghill sells hips, knees, shoulders. He's one of those guys that's in in the surgery with the surgeon, kind of explaining how it should work and how everything goes. He's been doing that, you know, since since forever. And I, I've talked to him quite a few times. And his thing is, if you're going to get this done, make sure you're going to one of the three doctors: the guy in San Francisco, Doctor Brooks, or doctor the doctor in uh, in South Carolina. And at some point, I, I couldn't afford the other two. But I, you know, it was I, I got to figure out how to do this. Got to figure out how to do this. And then, ultimately, when I was figuring everything out with the Cleveland Clinic, they're like, "Well, Doctor Brooks is coming back. He's do, he's doing it in Florida." So from there, kind of changed everything. Got a hold of him, and literally within about ten days of that notice, I had it scheduled, um, and I got it done the twenty sixth of December. So I'm two weeks today, and it's been great ever since. You guys were doing scramble drills today. You were in all the scramble drills, right? <laughs> I'm not. I'm doing good. I'm not doing that good yet. I'm. I'm, I'm down to one crotch, which is good. Um, you know, like I said, it's only been two weeks, and ev everyone says, "Well, what's the difference between doctors? Why couldn't you just have the guy, the guy do it?" And uh, it, you know, the Cleveland Clinic. And the biggest thing from what I gathered from talking is just the the rehab process, and and you know how long you're opened and. Getting you, getting you open, getting you cut, getting a new piece in there, getting your clothes back up is a, a big part of this for whatever reason. And uh, the guy that I, you know, the guy that I went to do it, he's pretty fast with it. It took about an hour and 10 minutes of surgery um, where most guys are taking about two and a half hours to do this, which he's about half the time. And uh, ultimately, like I said, I'm, I'm, I talked once saw another doctor that does this, you know, for a checkup and he says, everything looks great. I'm doing really good and, and just keep doing what I'm doing. So well, good work, Jim. I'm glad to hear. It. Have you slept through the night now? I, I haven't, I haven't slept through the night, but 
I, it's because my bathroom break, like, you know, I, I'm drinking yeah. a lot of water because of the medicine. Gotcha. I get to go to the bathroom now. So it's just, that just could be old age too. But I was, when I, when, before I got it fixed, I was up every two hours. I had to literally get out of bed and just walk around and get oh, my wow. hip. The pain was that bad, huh? Yeah. And it would throb down my leg. And it was just to the point where like, I literally have to get up and walk around at night, you know, three, four times a night just to, I couldn't just lay there. It was too painful. Oh, so my now goodness. I get up and I'm like, I got to go to the bathroom and I lay there and I try to fall back to sleep. And eventually I get him to go to the bathroom and I'm good. You know, so it's once a night now. So and it's way better than what it was. So I'm good. Is your pain gone? The pain, it's a different pain right now. Mine's a recovery. Mine, mine's it's like a, a healing pain, like a soreness. Pain. Yeah, I got I got a, about a, almost a, a eight inch scar on my hip. You know, you saw it on, on you saw a picture. It's a huge scar. Yeah. So it's just that. The pain that I that I had before is completely gone. But you have to remember, the pain that I had, the, the area that was causing the pain is completely gone. It's it's now a it's a metal, it's a metal, you know, it's that area whole area is gone. I have no more cartilage in that area. It was all scraped out or, or sanded away, I guess. And then they, you know, they insert this uh, joint. You can pretty much say it's just a joint. They insert it and then they it's put this new, on the. It's bone. a new ball socket. Yes, brand new ball socket. Yep, it isn't as big as the the traditional uh brand new hip so yeah well man that's awesome i'm glad that uh sounds like things are going better for you i'm glad to hear that the six million dollar man is uh in action <laughs> were you able to travel with the team this past weekend to franklin and marshall for the franklin and marshall open i did not travel to that um my doctor felt and and even you know talking to my bosses and everything like i said i didn't want to get the surgery at this time of year it's actually you know i'm right in the middle of my season but because of insurance because of the pain that I was dealing with, you know, at the end of the day, my, my doctor said, you're just pushing off the pain for a whole nother, you know, three, four months until the season's over. And because of the way my insurance worked, there's like 10 different variables that my doctor, my boss, my, my, the AD are like, man, it sounds like you got to get this done now. And, and I, I was doing everything I could to try to wait until the, the week after the national term to get it done. Ultimately it was just the best decision. I missed one event. I missed two practices and one event. Um, I've been to every practice since then. Um, I didn't go to Franklin and Marshall. We didn't send, we only sent two starters there anyways. All the other starters stayed back. We had practice. I ran those practices. Um, and like I said, I've been to everything else. I'm going to Virginia Duels this weekend. So we're, we're back at it. So somebody had to stay back anyway. It might as well be the guy who can't travel who just got a new hip. Exactly. Exactly. How, how, give me some highlights from Franklin and Marshall um, to help our listeners and viewers understand the progress you guys are making. You only sent, what two starters did you send to Franklin and Marshall? We sent uh, um, Aaron Ferguson and uh, Blake Shaver. Blake Shaver took a sixth place. Um, and you might think, well, sixth place is kind of weird because you only can get five matches in a day. He had four matches, and he thought that everyone was done. He was actually in the shower because our, our coaching staff at the time told him that they told him he was done. And then he was in the shower, and then they, you know, they, they called him to a mat. So they're like, the coaches figured out and figured out he could wrestle one more time, and there was a guy that was available. They went in the shower, got him out, and he ended up losing that match. Um, at the end of the day, he, you know, he he had two losses going into it, and, and ended up wrestling for fifth and sixth and lost that match well. But he, you know, he wrestled. I, the coaches said he wrestled well. I followed as long as much as I could on flow, and you know, you're watching on a little screen, and the screen doesn't move, so he wasn't the best. But with him, it's just about quantity of matches. And like I said, he hasn't missed an event yet. We're just trying to get him as many matches as he can. He's young. He's a freshman. He's not cutting a whole lot of weight. Um, our goal with him is just to get as many matches and he literally gets better every time he wrestles. So um, at the end of it, we think that he got better. The last match wasn't the best situation for him being in the shower, getting putting on clothes, hurrying out, out there. Um, but before that, he wrestled pretty well. Um, our, our coaching staff, Malik works with him every day, twice a day. And Malik, you know, Malik had nothing but good things to say about it when he came back, except for the last match. So he's doing real well. As far well, as Aaron he's like Ferguson, six, think, five, right? He's like a six foot five guy, isn't he? six or five and the plan is to get him to heavyweight at some point um but we're wrestling this year at, at, at 197 but uh he's about six five he's he weighs about 20 he weighs about 220 at the beginning of the year he's he weighs about 205 208 on a regular basis cuts gets down to 97 with two good workouts doesn't really cut weight you could that's say, not really cutting weight you know what i mean he's not no. like pulling 30 pounds a week or 20 pounds a week no no he thinks that he thinks that a month after the season over he'll be a, he'll be 230 so our goal is to get him to 245 with his height and he, he knows how to wrestle. So it isn't, you know, I, I think that a heavyweight, he'll be a handful just because he knows how to wrestle. And you know how those, you know, how heavyweights are, Zeb. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a, it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Exactly. Exactly. 
Uh, how did everybody else give me some other highlights? Aaron, well, Aaron Schaefer wrestled. I think I think he, he won two matches and then he hurt himself and he's he's got some. I don't have a price. Wait, he got some meniscus. Who was it? Aaron. Who? Aaron Ferguson. Aaron Ferguson. Aaron Ferguson. Started okay. Seven pounder. So he, he's he's gonna have to get some more uh, um, cartilage taken out of his knee. Hopefully, he'll be back in about three weeks. It, it, you know, it's it's an unfortunate. Um, he's he had some bad luck with his knees. I think that after the years, always get really got to focus on getting his legs a lot stronger. Um, and in the meantime, we're going to go with just backups and, until we get him back. We still think that he, he's going to be ready to wrestle by the end of the year. Um, but until then, we're going to go with some freshmen. We're going to, we've got about three freshmen that are 157s, and we're going to use all of them and, and try to get them all, all five of them, their five minute, their five limit match. And at some point, we don't think Ferguson will go. Then we'll go with our next best guy, which by far is Keegan Knapp, who, who, uh, um, has a has had a pretty good summer. Beat the Ohio State guy. He's beaten some really good guys. Placed out at Navy. Um, for a freshman, he's done an amazing job for us. He be, he's the next best guy. But like I said, we're not going to use him past the five matches until we know that Aaron Ferguson is done for the year. Explain that five match thing that you're talking about, Jim, and, and the freshman. So last year they they passed the rule that freshmen can wrestle up to five matches without breaking their their red shirt. So when I say wrestle up to they can go with the team. The team can pay for them. They can travel with them. They can, you know, they're essentially in the starting role and and they're, you're treating them like a starter. After they get five, if you use them that six, they're officially using a year of eligibility. If you don't use them in that six or beyond, then they're still going to redshirt. Is it five matches or five dates? Five dates. Definitely five, five dates. dates. Yeah. So you could take a guy to the Midlands. You could take a guy to the scuffle, which are two separate events. Yep. And you could actually, they could wrestle those two dates and then wrestle Michigan State. They could get 25 matches on five dates, technically. Technically, they could. You got to be careful. Like, for example, our Virginia duels can, is counted as one point. You're allowed You're allowed two two-day tournaments that only count as one point. Got it. Now, you know, like I said, Keegan Knapp, um, the, the funny thing is we're saving Keegan Knapp for probably our conference duels rather than the, you think, why aren't you using the Virginia duels? Um, we're kind of going with the idea that, you know, there's some, there's some conference matches that we think that we're going to need a, a 50, a 57 pounder that has an opportunity to win. And like I said, he's, he's shown some, like I said, placed at Navy, which I want to say that we had, there were three or four max schools there in place. Um, he, he's done a good job. Beat the Ohio state guy who was a backup, but still beat the Ohio state guy. So we think he's our second guy. So we're saving his two, two matches. For moving forward for Mac competitions, we're not going to use him at the, at the Virginia duels. We're throwing in one of our other freshmen, um, one of the guys that placed at uh, um, Cleveland State. His name is Ethan Barr. We're going to use him. He's actually a forty nine or moved a forty one forty nine pounder moved up. We're going to use him this weekend. Uh, so you guys have another thing going on. Um, well, first thing, the the the, uh, the Edinburgh duel got canceled. Uh, your AD stepped in. The weather was pretty bad. It was cold out. They canceled a really awesome event for safety reasons. I get it or whatever. I wasn't happy about it, but I get it. Uh, <laughs> will we be rescheduling that? And what is the situation there moving forward with the Edinburgh Duel? It was the alumni match that we're having. We're moving the alumni match for, let me get this right, January 27th against SIU. It's at the Fieldhouse. So our alumni match will be January 27th. It's a Friday, I believe. I don't have my calendar in front of me. It's a Friday against at the Fieldhouse. If anyone was at the um, Iowa Wisconsin event that we had a few years back, we're going to kind of set up the same way where the, you know, two sides of the matter could be tables and 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 uh, a serving bar and a, a dinner served you. The other two side will be for um, stands. That'll be our alumni event. We're still going to do everything we were going to do at the Edinburgh match. We're just putting it in place that time. As far as the Edinburgh match, we still haven't officially scheduled it yet. I think that uh, you know I have that last weekend wide open. Matt has Bloomsburg. We're going to try to either go that Thursday or Friday, or we don't, we, we probably aren't going to go just because of both the way our schedules work out. Um, we wrestle Edinburgh. It isn't a match that we have to make up because they're not on our side of the conference. If it was an East team, um, Central Michigan, Ohio, Northern Illinois, uh, SIU, we'd have to wrestle them since this isn't an East opponent, it's a West opponent, or since it's a West opponent and not an East opponent, I'm, I'm mixing them up. Then we, we don't have to wrestle. So we're still working around Matt's schedule a little bit. You're in the West. They're in the East. Yes. There you go. There you go. So they're not, if they were in the West, you'd have to make it up. 
Yes, exactly. For the conference exactly. dual standing. Okay. Yep. So, so Virginia duels. I saw the Bobcats are there. Um, University of the Inter- usually the University of Virginia is there. I believe Chattanooga is there. I don't believe so this year. Not this year, but who do you guys think you're going to run into? Who's the big dog? The Arizona State's been there in the past. Mizzou's been there in the past. Who's the big dog you could run into? Or are the are the uh, matchups already released? Yeah, they, they, it's already it's a it, they're doing a little different now because ever since the Big Ten changed their schedule, they've had a hard time getting 16 teams or even at this point eight teams. So they just they it, it's a two day event. We wrestle in four matches, so we're wrestling um, Campbell on Friday, and then we're coming back and wrestling. South, uh, South Dakota State, Friday afternoon, and then Saturday morning we're going to wrestle Virginia, and then Saturday afternoon we're wrestling Navy, the Naval Academy. So you already know the th- the four matchups. That's good, right? Yeah. Well, like I said, we know who we, we know who we're wrestling going into it. Um, it's something that in the future I'm gonna, you know, I really like the the you get in a bracket and you work your way along. I, I've always liked that that they've changed it the last two years ever since uh, you know after COVID, just trying to get schedules get get matches in. Um, I'm going to see if either they go back to it or maybe, you know, maybe we switch. I've always liked the tournament format of it. And like I said, I've been going there for 20 years since, since I, I wrestled there. Yes. Well, you wrestled under Romano. Romano went like maybe one or two years after that. I've gone every year that I could, um, back, you know, back in the day used to be invited. Um, now it's something that it's, it's been one of our, our big, big things we put on our schedule. Um, like I said, with our team, our young team next year and just being set duels, I can, you know, I can try to get four duels at my place next year. So I'm going to figure out what the best thing to do financially is. Um, it, it, it is an expensive trip. Just getting a bus out there. You got to, you got to stay three nights usually. Um, so it's an expensive event. So, but like I said, I've loved it in the past and it's been great to us. You, you know, back when we had some really, really good teams, we won it. We beat uh, Missouri one year. Um, we've taken third many times. Um, it's, it's usually that, that, that event that, Back in the day that we'd go to and we'd beat some ranked teams and we'd get ranked because of it. Back when we had Bedlion and Kilgore, I remember every year we thought we'd have a really good team. One year we went to we went to the body bar at Cornell and we ended up winning the tournament. We didn't, we weren't ranked. You know, about a month later we went to this event. We took I think, second, got to the finals, and you know they they jumped us into the the rankings finally. Um, so it's been a an amazing event to wrestle good competition. It's a, it's an event that we know we're going to be able to wrestle some good teams. And South Dakota State's pretty tough. They beat Nebraska this year. Navy's always tough. Um, Campbell, they've been on the the they've been on the uprise for a long time now. They're doing really well. So, like I said, Virginia's always you know Virginia's Virginia. They're they're an ACC school, so you're always going to get get good event get good schools there. I love it. Uh, what's the first home event we will see Kent State at? So, if I got my dates right, it would be the January. it would be the January the, the the next alumni match, which is January 27th, which is a, a Friday. Okay. Because so January twenty seventh for SIEU. Yes, that's correct. Yep. Because we go okay. from here, then next next week we or the following week we wrestle Buffalo. At and Buffalo. The week after that's the, the, yeah, it's a Sunday. Then the week after that is the SIU match. So that, that that'll be our alumni match. Okay. So that they're moving that one. That one will be January twenty seventh, six p.m. at the Fieldhouse. Welcome back, students. Uh, yep. Winter winter hat giveaway, and that's going to be. The alumni, alumni meet with Ron Gray, right? Yep. We're still trying to get Ron Gray there. Hopefully he can. He's had some health issues, um, but we're hoping that we can get him there as well. And then Sunday, uh, it's it's a it's a Friday, Sunday. Claire Ann will be in town on Sunday. I'm guessing that's at the Mac Center. And that's and that's a Beauty and the Beast. So we're going to have a gymnastics match going on the exact same time as a wrestling match. Okay. We've done it then, every year. It's a staple event for our, our athletic department. Loves this event. We've been trying to get at least one a year. It's something that, that we're trying to do every year. Our goal is to try to get like a Pittsburgh where they come in, they bring their gymnastics team. Um, we do both the, you know, we wrestle against Pittsburgh, we, re- we do gymnastics. There's only about, because of such few, you know, gymnastics teams and wrestling teams, there's only about, like, besides the Big Ten, about 20 teams that rest, that, that have wrestling and gymnastics. So it's a little bit more challenging to do. Yeah. And, the, you know, the logistics of it, like you're saying, getting it together and then you got to put everything together. Yep. Coordinate everything with the two teams. I understand. And then yep. uh, after the Clarion, you have Feb- to start off February, you're going to have the grudge match with Ohio University, February 3rd down there in Athens. Then you go up the, on that Sunday. Wow, that's a rough travel week. You go from Athens to Mount Pleasant, Michigan for Central. And then your last two duels, you end up with a Thursday duel, February 9th with Cleveland State. I think Namath might be coming to that one. Yeah. 
Okay. And uh, the final home one before the MAC tournament will be Bloomsburg. Blooms. Unless we pick up Edinburgh, then Edinburgh will be that Thursday or Friday after. Gotcha. All right, Jim. We're going to keep her short tonight. I know you got the hip thing going on. You got anything else for me? No, just like I said, looking looking to get into the, the dual meet. You know, we missed a match because of the Edinburgh and our starters were never expected to go to Franklin and Marshall. So it's been a little bit longer than I would prefer as far as the break. Um, so we're looking forward to wrestling this weekend. And then ultimately, you know, you look at the MAC, the, the MAC conference and I see that Clarion just upset, um, Clarion just upset Central Michigan. Cleveland State beat Clarion. Um, you know, it, it's a it's a one. I would think that you know we lost to Northern. We both won five matches. They won eighteen fifteen. So it was a really close match. I would think that most of the matches in the conference are going to be very similar to that. It's just going to come down to matchup and head to head. And I don't, you know, I think that it, when they started all this, people thought that uh, Lockhaven was the favorite. I, I don't know if they are anymore. But then yes, you, you try to figure out who the favorite is, and I really don't know. It's gonna. It's going to be almost like last year. Lockheed got really hot at the end of the year, um, and they made a run. I think that there's about there's about a handful of teams that can that can make a run and make a run for a, a, you know whoever has a great tournament. Like we talked about weeks ago, you get a guy like Jake Barry, Cody Kamara, and uh, and you get three guys in the finals, which I'm not saying we're going to have, but I think if if Jake Barry wrestles real well, he could be in the finals. If Cody Kamara wrestles real well, he's, he's been a MAC champ, he can be there. Enrique's ranked second, I think. You know, he's beating the guy who took who took third last year. I think that if Enrique does well, he could be in the finals. You get three guys in the finals and you can get another four or five guys to place anywhere in the tournament. I want to say that's right around what what uh what Lockhaven did last year and they won the tournament. Um and like I said, last year we all went into it thinking that Central was a heavy favorite and and I wouldn't, you know, this year there is no heavy favorite. It's it's a it's you know, any team could win it. It's just who gets who gets hot at the right time, who's healthy at the right time. Um, I think, you know. I think we need to get our 57 pounder back and, and he has, he's got to go there. and He's got to win matches. I, I thought that coming going into the year that he could be, he could be a guy that could place at a tournament like this. Um, so, you know, uh, you got to have him back to, to, to win, but I really enjoy the, the conference dual meets at the end. I really, you know, I, it's a lot different than doing what we do in the front half of the, the season with all the tournaments. I think next year we're going to try to get more duels up front, just having a young team, um, maybe get some more tournaments in the middle of it rather, or, or tournaments, like like the Franklin Marshall, um, so that's the plan. Like so, we'll see, we'll see. But I'm excited about the end of the year and just you know, it, it's kind of weird. We went from being in the in the beginning of the season, all of a sudden you get past New Year's and you get past a few events, and all of a sudden you're in the you're you're in the middle, headed down the the home stretch for the end of your dual mid season. All right, Jim. Well, you got the hip replaced. Um, <laughs> this isn't the last year for Jim Anderson for Kent State Wrestling, is it? No, not at all. Yeah, I, well, I have one more year in my contract, so I'm definitely going through that. And um, like I've been coaching a long time. I, ironically enough, next year is my last year of my contract. It also is the you have to be 52 and and have 30 years in the state of Ohio to retire. I'll have I'll have 32 and three fourths here, and I'll be 52. So I have the years, and I'll be 52. But like I said, I, I know that I'm going through next year. My plan has always been to to be a wrestling coach until I'm 55 years old. That's always the age. I said, all right. You get past 55 and you're just one of those old guys holding on. Um, so my goal is my goal is to be to be on the mat more, like I, you know, like I was the last few years, and and to be showing more stuff and and be able to demonstrate more than I have been in the past and to, to do it, you know, to, to be a hundred percent next year for it. And then, like I said, I I I know I have to work until I'm 55. I still have a drive to be a, a coach. I'll see what uh, what the administration has and has has set for me next year, and we'll go from there. But uh, you know, I'm I'm really enjoying this and it's just so much different than like I said, we can, after the years over, we can talk about how much different it is from now com compared to 12, 13 years ago, the whole NCA is different. And people are like, well, you know, how come there's no Mac teams in the, you know, years ago, there was always us central Michigan, maybe another, maybe OU is ranked nationally. There isn't a Mac team that's ranked nationally. And a lot of it's just to do with this NLI money along with cost of attendance, along with the extra money they're given for um, the, the court case that was won. So there's, three different avenues to get money and most wrestling programs that aren't in the, the power five schools don't have that money to give where the other ones do. So now you get a school like, and like I said, we'll use Ohio state even just cause I'm familiar with them. You know, you start breaking all that money down. You, you'll have almost 15 scholarships by the time you use cost of tenants, by the time you can use the, the, the court case money, 
and we, we're still at nine scholarships. And back when we had nine and Ohio State had nine and everyone else had nine, we could compete. You know, Central Michigan has shown for years they could compete with nine scholarships. Now that the bigger schools have more and the, the smaller schools don't, you, you know, there's kids out there that can technically go to go to Ohio State, get their food paid for because you're allowed to having a, um, cafeterias or athletic cafeterias, which were never allowed until about three years ago. You can give a kid a half a scholarship. He can get the food for free, find a place to live. And, you know, and if you, and if you have 15 or 16 of those, like most Big Ten teams, that's 30 kids that are on almost like full rides, essentially. And that's not even counting NLI money that, that, that people are giving them. So yeah, the name, it, image, likeness thing's a game changer for them, obviously. Yeah, yeah, but it's it just actually it a game changer. Just puts more space between you and them, actually. Exactly, that's exactly it. And yeah, you know, I, I've heard I mean, not like this game changer. Like all of a sudden, they started winning. They were winning already. <laughs> yes, but now the disparity and the gap is widened. Hundred percent. You talk to a lot of the coaches, and I, I think that ultimately our goal is to, you know, you go out, and you try to find four or five guys that can get to the national tournament, and you know, like I got three guys that I think that should be at the national tournament this year. I think Jake Barry can go there and. And I think he can compete at the national tournament. I think Enrique, if he's wrestling good, can compete there. What does that mean? I don't know what it really means right now. But both those guys, if, if you know, I wouldn't want to have to wrestle them first, second round of the national tournament. Um, Cody Camaro has been there. If he can make it, it'll be his third year there. Hopefully he can make some noise. So I think that the goal for schools like me right now are to get three, four guys, five guys at the national tournament. Hopefully they can make some noise and you get yourself in the top 20, 20 you know, 15 of the national tournament that way. Ultimately, that's what we're trying to do, I think. I love it, Jim. I love hearing it. I'm glad to hear that you're healthy here for 2023. I appreciate it. Um, we will talk next week and hear all about the Virginia duels. Thank you for the time. Good luck to you guys this weekend in uh uh where is it? Is it it's not it's uh Hampton. Fair, it's it's Hampton, yeah. Hampton, Fairfax, Virginia. Virginia is where you're that's at George Mason, is where the Mac tournament yep. is in March. You're in Hampton this weekend. Good luck to you guys moving forward. Thanks for the time tonight, Jim. You got it. Thank you. Go Kent State.